Cash Flow Diary Podcast, Episode 205. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. And as you know, I'm your host, Jay Massey, and we've been talking to individuals who have been going out there doing some imaginary things, right? You've been going, wow, how on earth does all of these people exist? I mean, you're striving to get to $100,000 a year, and here is yet another person who's been able to do this in a 30-day period. You're like, wow, that sounds absolutely wonderful. Well, I think today's uh, guest is going to be a little bit of a different story for some of you, and you'll be able to glean even more insight of what it's going to take for you to take your business and most importantly, know when to pivot to the correct business, business models to make things work. So I I know you've been enjoying them. I know you've been thinking about, man, uh, uh, there's so many things that they have in common. We'll see if we can't find some differences, but I'm almost willing to bet that today's guest, Mike Schmidt, is going to say some very similar things that you've heard before. What's really cool is that he's taking time out of his day while he's still expecting the birth of his son. So keep this in mind. He could be a little frazzled and called away at the last minute to go to the hospital, but I think we'll make it through this interview. Mike, are you there? I sure am. How are you doing, Jay? So far, so good. So far, so good. Glad to have you. Now, as a first-time guest on the show, what if you could, for us, please, give us a little bit uh, of the background and history of some of the things that you've done and do uh, that led to your the first time you ever did $100,000 in a month. Sure. Well, so I own a website design and internet marketing company based in Tucson, Arizona. And we've got a team here of 20 people full time in office that uh, help build web solutions and internet marketing projects uh, for a lot of different clients, mostly locally to southern Arizona, but we have clients uh, across the U.S. And um, we, we are not, we started our life not so different from a lot of web design companies that are out there um, creating a lot of different really cool web projects for, for people. And I started the company about six months or so before I graduated from uh, uh, from the University of Arizona, and so at that time, you know, I had a lot of support from from my dad, who um, who was uh, happy to see me in business and happy to be a pathway for me to be you know off of his uh, off of his payroll, and um, <laughs> you know I <laughs> and uh, you know th- to say that I've done that would be an understatement. We've we've done a lot of really cool things uh, in building a business, but um, you know the 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 at this point we've built over a thousand websites. Uh, so in that time period, we've really honed in all those skills. And one of the things that's been really key to our success is the step by step process that we've we've created and. Um, it's really about transparency and, and education of our clients so that way they can get the best result. And also we can apply the learnings of doing this over a thousand times uh, to each of the clients that come through through this year. And, you know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a, uh, uh, all that long ago that we really looked at our model and said, hey, things are going well, but could it be better? And that's led to us developing a, uh, a new business model that's kind of changes the way a lot of web design companies do things uh, that has allowed us to build a lot of recurring opportunities, recurring revenue opportunities in our business. And, and which is why I'm here talking to you today is bringing a, um, you know, more than a hundred thousand dollars a month in recurring revenue for us right now. We're at just about $115,000 a month. So while there's a lot of people struggling, as you mentioned, to make a hundred thousand in a year, and there's been a lot of people who are now doing that a hundred thousand in a month, you know, we can, you know, I'm very proud to say that we are doing that on a on a monthly basis, uh, 
which 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 is a, a way different picture than it was just uh, just a few years ago. Well, and and that's the thing that I I like. You know, everyone, many of the other individuals, you know, the idea of doing a hundred thousand dollars in a month, most people are automatically going to default to things like real estate or, you know, you did it one month, but you can't do it the next month. And very few are thinking about the possibilities of how could I, you know, do a business uh, myself that comes, that reaches that level of revenue on a monthly basis in a recurring fashion and, and it not be real estate. So you've managed to do that in a space where not only is it recurring, but it's also, that's not the traditional business model. Yeah, you're right. It's it's really not typical of a company like ours to do that. And and it really started with, you know, I, I can't say that I said, hey, I, I'm I'm setting the outcome to be a more than a hundred thousand in a month. But the but really the outcome was how do we create more stability in our business? The the main driver behind wanting to do this was the stress associated with starting each month feeling like I had to climb a mountain in order to hit our numbers. And every new team member that came to work for us was another responsibility <laughs> to take care of. Right. And, you know, those things add up way quicker than I had imagined going into it. You do realize you're, you're adding a new team member in, in the next few days, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're watching the clock and, uh, you know, be glad. I'd be very happy to, to welcome him to the team. So <laughs> yeah. And that, and that team member, he, he can't be fired. Um, and, and he will cost more than the others for a long, long time, way before he contributes any revenue to the that's system. True. <laughs> so, that, that's true. You know, it's it's going to be a, a passion project here for sure. There it is. There it is. <laughs> a passion project indeed. So I, I'm curious to know, uh, was are you like most people where it takes, you know, about seven years to be that overnight success or did it actually happen overnight for you? Yeah, it's it's definitely not been an overnight success and it's been a... Uh, um, we, we've been in business since 2003, so you know we're working on 13 years here. And you know, while I would consider what 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 we've done uh, a huge success, you know, I'm certainly not where I want to be yet. I've got much bigger aspirations to to continue to build what what we've got here. So you know, that's going to take some more time, and and uh, you know, it's been a lot of iteration and a lot of learnings, a lot of failures, and a lot of. Um, just assessment of, of what we could do differently in order to get closer to to the, that outcome. So and so since you bring up the concept of and uh, subject of failures, what would you consider them necessary in in terms of being able to achieve? It? Could you have achieved this without any failures? Because I've seen many people take time and time and weeks and months and sometimes years trying to perfect all of their processes without even getting started because they want to know, well, what happens on the third Tuesday of a blue moon if this happens and how am I going to respond? And I need to know before I get started. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the saying winners lose more often than losers lose. You know, we, we lose all the time and, and in lots of little ways, but it's how we feel about it and how we choose to react to that is, is, uh, is really the key. Um, yeah, you know, I, 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 it's absolutely part of the process for us to make mistakes. Sometimes those mistakes are really minute, and it's they're really easy to overcome. And other times they're maybe uh, more of a financial uh, burden or a, a bigger deal that we have to deal with. But it's uh, it's every step has been a, a key piece of our success, uh, whether it's been a, a true success or a, a failure. Um, you know, I, have, I had a client that I've worked with for a long time and, you know, he, you know, like a lot of people have clients that are really easy to work with and some that are more challenging. And, you know, he's taught me that, um, that those challenges are the things that are, are, that make us stronger, even though in the moment it really doesn't feel so great. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> not at all. In fact, though, uh, I've, I've grown to understand that a dissatisfied customer is actually some of the best information uh, on how you can improve your business. And the cool thing is, is that they offer it for free. That's true. And, and it, just because they're dissatisfied, you know, doesn't mean that you have to fix the dissatisfaction. It just means you have to acknowledge it and and decide how to move forward. Because sometimes it's helpful in fixing that for that client. Other times it shines a light into what me, might be wrong about a process or something internal or assumptions that I might be making 
that need to change as well. So it's there's really a lot of different levels to client feedback, especially ones that might not be as fun to hear because it's more than just surface level. I got to do everything to make this person happy. Uh, if you could do that, great. But if you also get the other, if I also get the other side of of that benefit, it's um, that's where I see the most growth and where I've seen the most um, shift in our business. So. Uh, with this idea of you know mistakes having degrees and categories, are, are there any that you would call like, oh my God, when this happened, I did not think we were going to make it? Well, you know, interesting, interesting story. So I had our accountant give me a, a call on a Tuesday morning. I just got back from a vacation, and he left me a voicemail. <laughs> this and isn't then, starting off well. <laughs> yeah, right. No, you know where this is going for sure. For sure. So st- stick along. This is going to be fun. So so he left a voicemail. Then I, I, I saw him email me too, which was weird. Like that was the first red flag. Okay. He called me, he emailed me. Now, now my account's like a good buddy. So, right. so the, the fact that he was trying to get a hold of me so urgently just seemed kind of odd. So I showed up to the office. I walked down. Uh, he, he's in the, in the neighboring suite to ours. I walked over to his office and I, I walked in and it wasn't the usual like, hey, how was your vacation? How was things going? Um, uh, he walked in and he closed the door behind me, which was like the other signal. Like, why Why is he closing the door? Uh-oh. Uh, like, we're usually just on friendly terms and we're just going to, you know, right. kind of go through what we need to do. So, like, I'm already sweating. Like, I'm already panicking, wondering, like, what's going on? Why? Why is he not acting like he normally is? And he just kind of quietly says to me, you know, Mike, you you don't have enough money to cover payroll this week. Do you have anything you can do to make make that happen? And here's what it is. And like he kept on talking for a while, and my my ears stopped listening, and my it just got inside my head, and my my vision just kind of narrowed, and I, I couldn't <laughs> comprehend. I mean, I knew what was happening. I wasn't didn't I'd be lying if it, if I said it didn't come as a somewhat of a surprise, but. Um, I just didn't know what, what to do about it. So, you know, the funny thing is, is I was so, um, distracted that the thing that I knew I needed to do was to pick up the phone, get out there, uh, meet with clients, sell projects and make some stuff happen really quick. But that was like the, the hardest thing for me to, um, uh, to conjure up that, that feeling to go do that. Cause all I could think of was the fear and the embarrassment and, and what was I going to tell my employees? And I was already playing out the scenarios in my head of how this thing was all going to be coming down when, you know, that hadn't really happened yet. I was forecasting right, right. this negative vision of what was happening now, as opposed to focusing on what I needed to do. And, and so that, that stress, um, you know, it was just, uh, it was just unbearable. And I, and I, I imagine a lot of people can, can relate to that feeling if they've had that in that business, not being able to pay your employees is probably one of, for me, one of the, the scariest thoughts. And so I knew at that point, I didn't want that to happen. And of course, we, we solved the problem. I wouldn't be here talking to you about this today if, <laughs> if, uh, so there if were we no hadn't pulled it out. And torches. No pitch forging torches. You, you figured out a solution. Yeah, we figured, we figured out a solution for sure. It's, um, you know, it's something that we, um, from, from that f- negative place and from that fear, we said, okay, what, what is the opposite of what do we want? You know, what do I want? I want the, the ability to have no stress. Uh, I, I want to be able to focus on clients and give them great service. I want to be able to pay my employees and, and, and take care of them uh, better than they could, could be taken care of at, at any other uh, company. I want, I want, uh, um, you know, I want to build, you know, something for myself here. And, and so once I've outlined those things, then I could start looking at what are the ways in which I could do that? What are the ways that I never have to be sitting in my accountant's office again saying, you know, what am I going to do and how am I going to make, make my payroll this week? Yes. And that's just being real from the seat of the CEO style. I mean, these are things that, it, you know, you, we think about the idea of having you know, a hundred thousand dollars in a month. There, there are some realities sometimes. And uh, I've had those types of conversations with my own CFO and I, I, and talking to her, it's just funny how, and I think about this, having been an employee before, it kind of makes you wonder how many times did the owner of the company come close to not making payroll? Like right. how many times, what were they doing behind the scenes? I mean, you didn't see them at the office. You assumed they were at the golf course. Right. Maybe what they were doing was scrambling, trying to figure out how am I going to make payroll? 
Right. And, and that is, that's just a funny thought in and of itself. But it sounds as though, I mean, by going to this recurring revenue model, I, I'm, that's, that's got to be a thing of the past. Yeah, it's, it's definitely something where, where we now start the month knowing exactly what we've got, uh, what we've got coming in. So I'm not sitting at the bottom of the hill looking at what I've got to make in terms of payroll and expenses um, and then what we want to make on top of that for profit. I know exactly what's coming in so that way I can plan everything else around that whole concept, which is a totally different place to be coming from. There is not stress associated with that. And the funny thing is, is working from that position allows a lot clearer thinking. So I talked about kind of that narrowed vision and that, that, that scarcity mindset because I can start from a place of, of, um, you know, that lack of stress, I can focus on what I want to build on top of that. Now we happen to cover all of those expenses and then, and then we can go out and we choose to, to sell more to clients, which helps us build an even bigger and better business. Indeed, indeed. And while we're talking about mindset, I mean, for me, it, it's been something that's important, uh, I believe. I would like to hear your thought processes uh, just uh, around the having the, the proper mindsets. I mean, for example, do you, do you believe that all successes start in the mind? Yeah, being able to visualize or, or as I like to say, like setting an outcome of what I want is is really key. And, and I'm guilty, like a lot of people, of forgetting that. You know, when I when I don't set an outcome, you know, I shouldn't be surprised that I don't reach any part of success. But the times that I've <laughs> I've written down what I want and, and discuss it, it's scary how often that's come true. You know, the, maybe it doesn't happen the timeline that I want, but but you know, as I've looked back through my journals and and my notes over the years, and because I'd have a tendency of writing what it is that I, I'm looking for, and also what are the things that are stressing me, and how can I fix the things that are stressing me out? It's really rewarding to be able to look at and say, here's the things that I wanted to happen, and be able to look around and see that they've come come to be. So I, I can't say anything, but it's been can't say anything. Uh, that it's been anything about uh, really setting that outcome. That's that's what it's really about. Yes. Uh, it, in fact, if you don't write it down, it's almost guaranteeing it doesn't happen to some degree. And I, I find that very, very interesting. So when you were in, uh, here's an interesting question then. When you were, uh, I was University of Arizona, correct? That's right. Uh, so when you were there, did did you ever envision the idea of what you have today? Not back then. I mean, it took me a number of years and a lot of reading and, and uh, working with a lot of coaches and, and mentors for me to understand the power in setting a vision and setting that that outcome. You know, for the first few years of my business, it was it was just, hey, I've got a business card, I've got a website, let's just make something happen. And I wasn't <laughs> purposefully building anything. And I and I really believe that if I had that that information at that time, you know, I would be further than I am at this moment. Cause that there was a number of years that I just sat there, um, letting business happen to me, letting life happen to me without setting any sort of objective other than just being really proud of the fact that I had started a business, which, which is great at first, but it doesn't last forever and get, get me where I want to go. So would it be fair to say that the the version uh, of the the business today are, are we is this like you know like a Windows ninety five you know Windows three to Windows ninety five Windows <laughs> NT <laughs> to Windows two thousand all the way to Windows ten so or is it a, a steady and incremental improvement process? Yeah, we, we're, in our in our company we set um, we set everything out ninety days at a time, and then we also look at six months at a time. So really. This is probably the most productive and focused around objectives we've ever been, uh, and I've got a really strong leadership team that that helps us set that vision and, and really execute on that. So, absolutely, it's continual it's continual improvement and and really um, focusing on what it is we need to do today, no matter how small, in order to get us that much closer to what we've identified that we want. So, what would you say then is how has your role changed as the the company grew? And more importantly, what systems would you say are absolutely critical? Like if, if I'm going to go out there and I want to build something that's going to hit similar revenues, what systems are absolutely 
critical to, to make that happen? My, my role has definitely changed. I mean, I was building the websites and you know, cleaning up the floors when I first started. I was, I was employee number one and, and everything passed <laughs> yeah. through me. Right. And, and uh, you know, transition to today, I get to work on a lot of projects that are, are more strategic in nature. And um, the reason I get to work on those projects is because of systems. It's because of the systems that we've created in various aspects of our business. So um, as an example, we, in our the website design side of the house, we have a, um, a binder that we use that really helps break down the steps that we take in building building a website and each client gets a copy of that when they when they work with us and it helps to not only educate the client about what we're doing but ensure that our team is following the steps in the same order that we do they should do each time that and those steps take into consideration the learnings that we've had across all the different projects that we've worked on and um, and once we have that system now we can work on you know how do we tweak the system and allow the team members to run that system, and and that's a much different place to be in than doing every project just a little bit, a little bit differently. Um, right. yeah, and that, that that learning around systems has, has been applied to lots of different places in our business. And we we say to our team members, and especially when they when they're new, we say you know look to the system for the answer, you know. And but then we also say you know sometimes there isn't a system for something, and so. You know, there's that. We need to we need to look at where we can continue to build and grow the systems where they're where they're needed. Well, and okay, that brings a really great question. Then that I I know that if I don't ask you, we're going to get the email for. Um, okay. <laughs> how does one take? I mean, someone listening right now that maybe they're they're starting from zero, so to speak. They are currently the chief cook and bottle washer, and they want to begin to build the system so that they can begin to put people in place. How how do you do that? How do you actually begin to construct those manuals or SOPs or whatever it is that you guys are using to be able to put those uh, to document this process? Okay, so have you figured it out yet that this is going to keep going all month long? We are bringing to you individuals who have managed to do $100,000 in a 30-day period. And I'm doing my best to find as many different people as we possibly can. Here's the point. The point is, I hope you're taking notes. I hope you're figuring out the processes, the things that they have in common. And most importantly, you are beginning to build your own roadmap. And well, speaking of roadmaps, if you'd like, you can send a text message. Text the word book to 72000. That's 72000. Again, text the word book to 72000. And I will give you my roadmap map. It's called Cash Flow Diary, 10 Steps to Creating Wealth in Any Economy. That'll give you a lot of the basic business principles that you could use right now to go out there and build your business. For those of you outside of the U.S., feel free to go over to cashflowdiary.com forward slash free book, cashflowdiary.com forward slash free book. Claim your electronic copy, download it now. Here's the thing. There is no time like the present. If not now, when? If not you, who, if not this, what? Get started. Let's get back and see what else Mike has to share with us. So there's there's probably two books that are are were pretty instrumental in, in planting this the seed with me around systems. One was uh, E Myth by Michael Gerber, um, and really just understanding uh, that whole concept of you know uh, employees run systems, systems run your business. And so that that's that's a great one that I've I've come back to again and again because it's you know there's there's so much value in that book uh, at every stage of your business's growth, um, and then the other one is um, Lead or Get Off the Pot by Pat Croce. I, I picked this one up. Um, I picked this one up on the way out of a Barnes and Noble in that like dollar bin on the way out, and I thought that the the title was a little ridiculous, um, but it was like a buck, so I'm like you know I was looking for something to read. But I'll tell you that book has been. Uh, really instrumental because it helps to help me to break down how to set an objective and break it into smaller action steps. And and that's, that's been really key because I've been guilty of setting a goal, but not really understanding all the things that need to happen in order to get that goal done. And if I don't break that down, it makes achieving that goal 
really hard or, or impossible. And that, that book put a really good framework around it. And there's some really good stories about his various businesses that, that he's run that, that were really inspiring to, to help me create, create those systems. You know, Mike, um, it takes around nine months for a baby to, to actually be born. <laughs> A, I I hear that. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a process to that. <laughs> <laughs> there is a process. But let me, that reminds me, I should check my phone, make sure that my wife's not texting us. She's at the hospital. Okay. We're good. I, I know. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. Uh, Cause you never know when you, when you're that close, it's like, it could be at any moment. Now, when it comes to the idea of putting a, a system in place, uh, how many refinements <laughs> does it take before you go, okay, we finally got it? Well, usually our first draft, we will aim to get it out as soon as possible because the only way we know if it's going to work or not is actually using it. And so there's no such thing as, as being perfect. And uh, for that whoa, reason, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. say that again. <laughs> I think a lot of people need to hear that part. Yeah. What you, what you put out there does not need to be perfect. And like, it is an example of that. A lot of the systems that we build, uh, they're on paper, they're on whiteboards, they're on things that are not like software and, and digital. <laughs> and, and, and some people just grind their teeth at that, that they can't believe that we're, we're uh, you know, a marketing and technology company that's, that's using these things. But I'll tell you, you, I can iterate way quicker on a piece of paper than I can talking to a developer about making a software change. You use and so paper? Ooh, I'm telling yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, the secret is out. And the secret works, I'll tell you. So we um we get it out as quickly as possible and then we iterate. Now sometimes that thing that we put out there will just work long enough to get us over whatever the issue was. And it stays that way for a long time and we don't iterate as much on that. Um, other times It'll be something where it's continual. That binder I mentioned, you know, we we, we just released our version 3.0 of that. So we've had we've had lots of minor updates in the middle of of those, but we've had three major updates, you know, in the in the you know probably ten years since that thing has been been used. And I'm assuming the updates come in the form of sticky notes attached to the pages. Well, that's how it started. That's for sure. <laughs> but but the, when we when we change to a next version number, actually everything gets reprinted and reorganized, and it's really nice, and everyone's really very excited about it. So, got it, got it, got <laughs> it. That makes sense. That makes sense. See, paper still has a function. Uh, this is good. This is good. Now, w- you mentioned briefly a, a, a little bit ago about um, you mentioned it really really fast about journaling, and I'm assuming uh, that this is something that you do on a a frequent or or a consistent basis of some kind. What other, you know, habits would you say that you've uh, obtained or, or, or or let go of, I should say, because some of them you may have to let go of that have helped you to be where you are today. So you've, you've probably heard me, your listeners may have heard of um, Hal Elrod and uh, his miracle morning. I'm a huge fan of, of the the savers, which is basically a, a morning routine to um, to set set the day and set set the focus of, and, and direction of what um, uh, what I need to be thinking about, as opposed to just letting the day happen happen to me. So, uh, you know, those those components are, are been really key. The, the ones that I like the most, I, you mentioned the journaling because you know journaling for me is a little bit about reflection about like what's going on, but a lot about setting what I want to have happen. So my perspective on uh, when I'm writing a journal in the morning, uh, I'll take the perspective of as if I was writing it that night and I'll say, what happened today? Uh, which makes for an interesting journal because I'll go back and look at it because my journal doesn't mean that that actually happened that day. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wish it did. Like I, I, when I'm dead and gone, somebody reads this thing. Somebody's be like, man, this guy was awesome every day. <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you, even if, you know, 50 or 80 percent of that stuff happens, which it regularly does. Uh, that, it makes for an ex- excellent day. Um, you know, also exercise in the morning really sets my my mind in, in, in the right right area. And it doesn't have to be a major major workout. Even just twenty minutes of of something at home just to just to um, you know get my get myself going is a is a, a has been a real real game changer for me. 
Well, if, I'll tell you this. If you pick up one of those nifty little Apple watches, they're going to want to stretch that to 30 minutes a day. You won't, you don't get the little award at the end of the day if you don't do 30 minutes. Just... Well, you know, a- Apple knows best. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally got you there. So, w- when it comes to, you know, being uh, consistent, I-, I should say, uh, would you say that that's something that you, you've had to grow in, that you were just born with? Uh, is that something that other people can master? Is it even necessary in order to get there? Definitely wasn't born with it. And it's something that I, I still struggle with to be, to be consistent, though it's that practice has helped me in a lot of different areas. I find that if I can be consistent with journaling or consistent with meditation or consistent with exercise, it, it helps me be consistent in other areas uh, once once my work day starts and um, or or with relationships and so it's a uh, it's a it's a kind of a foundational idea that you know maybe some people are are born with that I certainly was not and um, but I've I've drawn a great deal of value from practicing that yeah I, I get it you know um, the the interesting thing is, is when we start talking about disciplines and consistencies, we often discredit some of the standard ones we come with, so to speak, or that we've learned, like brushing our teeth. Uh, You know, that is a habit that is consistent for most people that are listening, uh, as as well as, you know, showering from time to time, hopefully, that's a <laughs> consistent one too. Uh, the But those consistent things tend to help us and you just have we just have to add a few more of those in order to become the best version of ourselves that that's required so what would you say uh you've done to i mean there are many agencies out there and there are many small various large ones etc but why why did you make it you know why, why why not what do you think other agencies or businesses are doing that's preventing them from getting to that that mark? One of the things that I, I believe our success, we already talked about the um, systemization and really, really being dedicated to that. But another piece is really understanding what we're good at and what we can focus on and, and, and not be distracted by all the other stuff that we could do. Now, in, in our space, you know, we occupy, you know, a kind of a, uh, focus on building websites and doing internet marketing. But even in that, there's a lot of different, that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So we've narrowed that even further to say, you know, you know, we only, we only work with WordPress websites like that. That is a, um, that platform is something that we, we focus on because we can be really good at. And we've eliminated other things that someone might expect of an agency to do. So, you know, we're not the company that's going to be you know, designing your logo. We're not going to be doing any, you know, print work for you. We're not, um, you know, we're, we're not even, um, you know, a, a, uh, uh, really big into the e-commerce space at, at the moment. So it's, uh, it's something where we, the more we've been able to focus on the stuff that we're good at and that we can build systems around the, um, the more we've been able to, to provide great service and, and help our, clients be successful. And that's been a a big, um, a big strategy for us. So, uh, focus for lack of a better way of putting it, it has been, it's been part of the key, ignoring the other things. And it's not that you couldn't do logos. I'm assuming you've made a logo at least once in your life. You've just chosen not to. Yeah. It's a choice to do that. Even though, even though we can do a lot of different things, it's also focus on, on our team. You know, we've, we've had, I've had to learn a lot about working with other people and managing, managing a team. And that stuff doesn't just happen. It has to be worth that. <laughs> and, and I was yeah. guilty of, of doing, of doing that, you know, in, in years past, you know, I had a team here and, um, I wasn't coaching them. I wasn't talking to them. I wasn't managing, I wasn't setting any sort of vision and, you know, that ended poorly. And, and today we've got a wonderful resource that is our team that myself and our leadership team takes great care of by having a, a, a much, much more focus. There's that word again, focus on our, how we're, how we're communicating and, and what we need to do to help each one of those people grow themselves and grow within, within our company. Yeah, I, I get it. Uh, if you, you build the people, the people build the business. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have a, a you know, kind of an idea that you know, in a big company, you know, there's this whole idea of climbing the corporate ladder. And um, in order to get up to that next step, you got to either knock someone out of there or they've got to leave. But in a small company, we look at it a little differently where, you know, um, instead of the ladder growing above us in a small company, as we grow, the ladder grows beneath us. And it's each of our jobs to make sure that our skills and our talents and our, our passions are um, keeping us at the top of our own ladder all the time. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> it's like build it under you. I like that idea yep. 100%. So let, let's talk about something a, a little bit different, but kind of still. Some you know people just don't have a lot of money to work with as they get started. You know, and they they feel like they can't make ends meet. Kind of back to what you were saying, staring at that mountain at the begin beginning of every month. Um, and, and to some degree, that's definitely uh, a, a mindset thing. I were there any challenges for you uh, in terms of you know your background or upbringing to to put yourself in this position to go? Yeah, we can do a hundred grand a month. My mindset has always been that I have the ability to create, and if I need to create money, I, I can go out there and do that. So it's one of my greatest resources that if everything else fails, I know that I can, I know that I can provide, and I know that I can make that happen. So that was a that was a kind of a, a belief that was really helpful, especially early on. But I I, I started this business with, with with virtually no money. I had a computer that I. I had been using in college. Um, I I borrowed, or I didn't borrow. My dad gave me four hundred dollars to join the local uh, chamber of commerce, and that was about it. I, I right. printed up some business cards, and so I I got up early in the morning to go to a breakfast I didn't want to go to to talk to people I didn't want to talk to, <laughs> uh, and you know, it was really awkward, and and I had to throw myself into that and, you know, client by client, it just started happening and it started to snowball and, and build and build. And, and, and like we were talking about before, there was definitely failures along the way, but the little wins is what added up to where we're at now. And, and it's hard, it's, it's easy to forget that that's what, where, where it started. And I think that that story that I'm telling you is, is not so different for a lot of people that it's a, it, it's, it's easy to, to 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 not think about all the little things that you can do that can build momentum into into something greater. Um, you know, my dad told me that in sales. My dad's been in sales for as long as I can remember, and he told me that uh, the the you the, there's all these chains, and these the people that you meet are going to introduce you to other people. And in looking forward, you don't necessarily know how that means anything and how that adds up to anything important in terms of. Uh, your ability to build or grow a business, and but looking back, it make it's a hundred percent clear. I can look back and trace clients that we have now, from client to client to relationship to relationship, back to meetings, back to some of those early breakfasts that I went to years ago. And if I didn't get my butt out of bed to to show up to that meeting, things could have been very different. So it was investing the time to do that, even though I didn't know where it was going. And especially then, I wasn't necessarily setting an outcome of what I what I truly wanted and what I what I wanted to build. <laughs> right? How how could you? You're just like, oh, I guess I'm supposed to go to this meeting. Yeah, yeah. Dad paid for it. I better go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is a good thing. Go do this. Okay, Dad. I had no reason to not to believe him. Uh, and... Right. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome, right there. Now, uh, for for those that are are listening, I, I know. That there's some who who probably want to begin to figure out, deconstruct, you know, their own business or businesses or or just their ideas and figure out how they can duplicate some of the things that you've done. Uh, if they want to track you down or figure out some more, what what's the best way for for us to do that? Yeah, so we're we're running a a course that we call Agency Mastermind, and so we just wrapped up a five week training on exactly what. I did to transition from selling one-time fixed bid web projects into selling recurring revenue projects um, that is now you know, exceeding that hundred thousand dollars a month. So, um, what we have is if you want to go to agencymastermind.com/cashflow, uh, you could have free access to a five-week training 
course. So they're each the segment's about an hour in length and is going it breaks down and deconstructs exactly what we're doing. And I've got copies of our sales proposals in there. We talk about uh, cash flow strategy. There's some really important things to know about how to transition because doing this incorrectly could jeopardize your business, could could really uh, mess things up. So we've explained all those things. I've got lots of learnings, pricing plans, and you know, there's also a campaign in there that helped us turn one of our worst months into one of our most financially successful. And, and we repeat that campaign every year and it continues to grow. So a lot of transparency, a lot of things that, um, that have, have helped us are all there. And um, through there, we've also got a Facebook group if people would like to connect and, and ask more questions. Uh, you know, we're, we're just at the beginning of building something and, and, and wanting to give back to, to people who want to trace some of the paths that, that we've set. And um, we're eager to answer questions and, and engage in continued, continued conversation. Indeed. And I definitely appreciate that. That's very generous of you. Now, um, uh, as we wrap up here, a, another question. Occasionally, there are individuals listening who they, they want to, to make business happen. They feel really good about it. Or maybe they're in the middle of business and something negative is happening to them at this particular moment. Just pretend for a moment that that person is sitting in front of you and it's just you and him or her uh, right now. What would you have to say to them? I, w- I would say I would want to remind them or ask them where are they going and how is this helping or hurting them from getting there? And then outline what are the things that need to change in order to, to one, overcome the immediate concern and second, put them on a trajectory for, for achieving that outcome. It's, uh, the, what you just described is something that happens, you know, once a week around here for me, you know, there's always something that just stops me and says, Oh, what am I doing? Am I doing the right thing? Is this, you know, is this really happening? And, and that's been most helpful for me is, is, thinking about how this adds up into the bigger picture. And most times, you know, fast forward a few days or a week later, I'm not even thinking about that. And, and, and if that's the case, it probably wasn't that big of a deal or something that really should have been stopping me up that much anyway. (laughs) I get it. 100%. 100%. I 100%. Well, what I do want to do is I want to make sure that you are available to answer that phone because I know the kid's coming but most importantly, I want to thank you for taking the time to to invest your knowledge and competency here with us and helping us grow uh, at the Cashflow Diary. Thank you, Jay. I really appreciate the opportunity. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. You've got a number of options in this one, if you think about it. I mean, maybe you know you should start journaling. Maybe you know, you know what, that book, E-Myth, I probably should actually read that. And Or, or maybe you're just like, you know what, it's time to start documenting and putting some systems in place. You're beginning to hear, I hope a lot of the same things over and over and over again. The ingredients to be successful, to get to that $100,000 month, it's out there waiting for you. You just have to go out there and grab it. It's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.